Hello everyone, welcome back to the Styles UK YouTube channel, LinkedIn page, Facebook page, Instagram, wherever you're watching this week's live. This is my first Friday live of the year and I'm very excited to be here. I'm a bit nervous as well, I feel a bit out of practice. I've had three weeks of not doing this, so bear with me. Um, but today we're going to be talking about heat transfer vinyl, more specifically the different types of heat transfer vinyl that we have available here at Styles, and the all important question that everybody wants to know, how you can cut different heat transfer vinyls on the GraphTech cutter. So I have the CE7000 with me here today, and we are going to be using this to cut two different types of heat transfer vinyl, and I'm going to show you how to apply three of them with a heat press to a garment afterwards. So if you have any questions during the live, throughout, chuck anything in the comments, and you can read them out to me as we go, and we can answer all of your heat transfer vinyl related questions. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So firstly, we are going to be talking all about the different types of heat transfer vinyl that we have at Styles. So Styles are the world's number one heat transfer vinyl manufacturer. We have over 14 different types, 350 plus colors. There is literally so much to choose from. In fact, I can actually show you all of the different colors that we have available. So just to give you a little bit of an example as to how many vinyls we do have there's a lot so regardless of what you're looking to decorate or the kind of designs you want to do we have got a heat transfer vinyl that will be suitable for you so for those of you that have never used heat transfer vinyl before or perhaps you're new to the garment decoration industry and you're exploring all of your different decoration options we use two different methods so you can either do heat transfer vinyl which is what we're covering today or custom heat transfers. Now, custom transfers, you upload your artwork online, order your transfers, a bit like a Moonpig card, we send it to you and then you just print it straight away. Heat transfer vinyl requires a little bit more work because you have to cut and weed it yourself, but there are a lot of different finishes and effects and benefits from heat transfer vinyl, which is why we obviously still use it. So as you can see here, this is an example of what we're gonna be fusing today. And this is one of our best selling vinyls. This is Sports Film, the world's number one vinyl. And as you can see here, this is just the design, but this is how it would arrive to you on a roll, not cut like so. So what you have to do is load this material into the cutter, cut out your design, and then you pull away all of the excess, which we are going to show you how to do. And then you're left with your design like so, which you then apply using a heat press. So it's a slightly different process than custom heat transfers. But like I said, there are over 14 different finishes you can get, including glitter, we've got flock, which is like a velvet, very luxury, luxurious texture. We've got our high build 3D, which is one of our most popular high, uh, vinyls. So as you can see here, there's a very thick finish on this vinyl. Um, what, have, what else have we got, Andy? We've got uh, chroma twill, we've got so many different heat transfer vinyls. Um, what have... Sorry. <laughs> I can hear myself on back blow. sorry everyone. Uh, yeah, so like I said, over 14 finishes, there's lots to choose from. So that's benefit number one, is that there are lots of different finishes and effects you can get with vinyl that you can't get with custom heat transfers. And then the other one is that you can offer personalization as well. So if people want, for example, their names or dates or just a short run of very unique designs, it wouldn't necessarily be the most profitable way to do it through custom transfers, depending on how you're ordering them. So heat transfer vinyl just gives you the option to expand your audience, expand what you're printing. So yeah, lots of lots of great options there. So for those of you that are just joining us, I just want to recap, we are talking all about heat transfer vinyl today. So if you have got any questions about how to cut, weed, apply, design, any of that, do drop them in the comments. So let's get started with then. So we've covered um, what heat transfer vinyl is and the process. And obviously if you stick with me, we're gonna walk through all of the process as we go from today's video. And if you stay to the end, we're also going to show you how you can layer different heat transfer vinyls as well. So we're going to take, I just dropped a weed on the floor, sorry. <laughs> we're going to, thank you Andy. We're gonna take this sports film design and we're going to put this glitter heat transfer vinyl 
over the top of it slightly. So just a slight layering on the bottom there. So we're going to show you how you can do this with a heat press and it still have a good wash quality. It still have a very high quality finish. So stay tuned to the end if you want to know how you can use two different heat transfer vinyls together to achieve a bit of a mixed media finish as well. So let's just recap over some of the different heat transfer vinyl types before we get started into the actual cutting and weeding. So we've got sports film, which is the world's number one heat transfer vinyl. It's got a very soft, thin finish to it. It's very easy to cut and weed. There are, I think over 50 or 60 colors now. There are so many colors available for sports film. I think we've even got neons available, haven't we, for sports film? Yeah, so lots to choose from. And this is the one to use if you're fusing onto standard, like cotton, like everyday garments. So nothing too um, crazy like sportswear or anything, but if you're just fusing day-to-day -day stuff, sports film is 100% the one to choose from. It only takes five seconds to fuse with a heat press and it's a hot peel as well. So even though you've got the slightly longer process with vinyl of having to cut and weed, sports film is super easy to cut and weed, which is fantastic. And then it only takes that five seconds and hot peel to apply. So it's a very quick process and it has such a lovely feel when it's on the garment as well. So I've got a fused garment here to show you. So this has got glitter on it as well, but the top part of this design is sports film. So if I can hold this out, you can see how much of a lovely, luxurious finish this is. Moving on, while we're here, special effect vinyls, we have things like glitter. So I don't know if everyone on the camera can see that. This is one of our rose gold glitters. This is a really, really gorgeous color, but it just gives that sparkle effect. It's fantastic for things like dance schools, cheerleading, all of that kind of thing. And there are lots of different special effect vinyls that we have as well. So like I said, we've got this glitter option. We have the flock, which is more of a velvet finish. We've got our new chroma twill, which is like a twill texture that they have some gorgeous colors as well. We have got our 3D vinyl, which we're going to cover today. Um, there's lots of other ones to choose from as well. And then we also have got Premium Plus. So this is a sports vinyl. So this has really, really great stretch and rebound. We always talk about our transfers coming with, you know, stretch and rebound as standard, which is something we're very pleased to offer at Styles UK. But Premium Plus is built for sports garments and it has four way superior stretch and rebound. So if you go onto our website and check out the Premium Plus page in the video of that, there's a video of Andy and Ellen physically leaning the garment, holding one end each and pulling it as far as they can, and it rebounded perfectly. So providing you cut and weed it and apply it correctly, it really will hold out for those performance garments, which is great. So before we move on to actually setting up the cutter, I'm just going to recap again for anybody that's joining us new. How many have we got people with us now, Andy? Yeah, we have. We've got a couple of questions already Go as well. Go for it. Um, we've got one or a few people would like to know where to get the folders from that you showed at the beginning, the colour cards. These ones. So I've popped a link in the chat on all platforms for those so you can find them very easily. And they have every single colour available. And as Molly mentioned, there's over 300 there. So it's the largest range anywhere in the world. And you can see what I love about this is you can see the texture as well. So you're not just getting a swatch of the color. You can actually see the finish of the vinyl that you're choosing. So let me see if I can show you flock actually while we're here. So this is the velvet one we were talking about. There we go. Cool. And um, we also have a um, question slash comment around using the vinyl for football shirts and classic football shirts. Um, football shirts where they're used only worn every so often um, and they wouldn't mind ordering in quantity as they could get through it quite quickly so anyone that goes onto website you can put your quantities in and you can see there's some price breaks there so around 5, 10 and 25 metres you can get the more you order the cheaper it gets um, but they also mentioned that they have done some trial orders with our products last week and they're extremely happy with the quality compared to lots of other places they've tried. Of course you are, because ours are the absolute best. Not that I'm biased, but thank you very much for the positive review. Uh, is, are we good on questions? Yeah, I think um, what Andy said about the price breaks as well for vinyl is a good one to mention. So obviously, similar to our transfer pricing structure, the more you order with vinyl, the more you save and the more the price comes down. So for th especially for things like black and white sports film that you know you're going to be using all the time, it's definitely a more cost effective and profitable way to order 10, 25 meters of that in one go because you know you're going to work through it than it is doing small orders of five and one and two as and when you get those customer orders in. Okay, 
Let's move on to actually cutting the heat transfer vinyl. So once you've chosen which product you want to work with, so we're going to be using this sports film today. This is, I believe this is beige, I think this colour is. Let me check on the colour card. Do, do, do. It is, I'm correct. This is beige. So we're going to use this today and apply it onto black. So like I said, you can either buy this in single metres if you're just um, starting out and you want to test a metre, or if you want, you know, in it like a bit of a bold colour and you know you're not going to want a lot of it, then you can order by the individual metre or you can order by the roll. So this isn't quite a metre because I have cut some of this off already earlier today. But the first thing I'm going to note when using heat transfer vinyl is the side that you actually want to cut on because I've made this mistake many times before, particularly with some of our newer vinyls. So this is the side that you want to cut. And as you can see, this is quite matte. So this is the side that has the um, adhesive on that's going to stick to the garment. And then the other side is very shiny. This is the carrier side. So we want to cut into the actual heat transfer vinyl so that when we pull it away, we're just going to be left with the vinyl and the carrier to fuse onto the garment. So I'm going to load this into our cutter with the matte side facing up so that I know that I'm cutting it correctly. Get the straight side. And I'm just going to load this in under the pinch rollers. Now with the Graftec CE7000, it's important to note that there are blue marks along the top of it. I hope that you can see, I might actually zoom this camera in, bear with. There we go. Hopefully that will help everybody view. So there are blue marks at the top of each point here. And these pinch rollers that hold the vinyl down have to be over the, uh, the, the rollers have to be under the blue marks, sorry, just so that it knows where to register. So once you load your vinyl in, make sure it's straight. And then there's a clamp on the back here and you just pull it in and the rollers will secure because if you don't have that in, it can fall straight out, which is not ideal when you're cutting. So I'm going to load this in. Both of our rollers are under the blue pinch mark, so that's great. Perfect. So next step here is to measure your heat transfer vinyl with the cutter. So I'm going to press number one, which is roll front edge. So it's just going to measure the distance between the two pinch rollers. And there it knows how long my heat transfer vinyl is. So now we're ready to do the actual cut. The next step is to do a test cut. So the different ways of using this board are you can have different conditions. So if we go into condition number one, two, three, and four, you can save all of your different cut settings for each of your different heat transfer vinyls, which is really helpful when you're using different vinyls all the time and you want to make sure that you, know, you don't have to spend ages fiddling around figuring out your cut settings every single time. So I've got condition number two here, which is set up for sports film. So I'm just going to do a test cut on here. So we've got... It's set to this condition, we've got the speed here, we've got the force, but I'm just going to double check that this is okay by doing a test cut. So you just press the left arrow and then enter and it will cut a little bit out for you. Now I'm going to be using the Styles LED Weeder today and as you can see this is one of my favourite vinyl tools because it has a light on the end which highlights your cut lines which makes it super easy. So let's find where it's done the cut, there it is. Pull that away, perfect. And you can see there on the camera, that has come away perfectly. So we're ready to do our actual cut. So I'm just going to share my screen with you for the next section. Let me know when we're good to go, Andy. Yep, you're sharing. Perfect, okay, so we're going to cut out the Friday Vibes design that I held up earlier. So we're in Graftech Studio 2 at the moment. So this is the design software connected to the cutter. So all I had to do was plug my laptop into the cutter via a USB cable and it all connects up nicely. So I can just go into File, Open, and then the design here that I'm going to use. So just select it and open it. Now it's quite big and it's over the cut space here. So I'm just going to shrink it down. Very, very easy to use this piece of software. So get it exactly where you want it. And then this is a very important step when it comes to using heat transfer vinyl. You have to mirror your design, otherwise it will cut it out back to front. So when you remove the carrier and stick it onto the shirt, the whole design will be backwards. So come up to object, go to mirror and just select flip horizontally. 
and it will flip the design round. From there, you can go to File, Cutting View, and it will bring up your design here. Now, this is the cutter that we're using today. It's already connected. It's got it on the lower right section. I'm actually going to change it to a lower left just to show you that you can move the design around. And then you just hit output here when you're ready to go. So if I select output, we're going to change back to the cutter view, Andy, when I press this button. <laughs> Just while you're waiting for that, Molly, we did have a question about uh, whether we'll be at PMP with some of our vinyl this year. Of and course we will be, yes. We will be bringing, actually, to be confirmed how much of the vinyl we're bringing, but we will be at PMP this year. We're going to be bringing all of our products. We're bringing some new products, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, so 100% we will be there. We're on stand. Is it D30 again? D30, yep. D30 is our stand, so make sure you come and see us. We've got lots of talks to going on throughout the three days, which is fantastic as well. Um, yeah, lots going on at PMP this year. And there oh, might even be some sneak peeks at new vinyl as well, I've, I've heard. Oh, exclusive yeah. sneak peeks at new vinyl. That's exciting. Okay, are we ready to cut? Yep. Cool. So we just press output on here. And in theory... Bring it out of condition mode, apologies, that's my mistake. Make sure it's actually in cut mode. <laughs> and it will do its job. Now, as you can see from this cutter, it's actually really quiet in comparison to something like a silhouette. So silhouettes are fantastic if you're just starting out, but they can be quite loud and they can only run off so many designs at the same time because of the size of the cutting mat. Whereas this vinyl, you could put a 25 meter roll in this if you wanted to and it would just churn out that much of the work. So super, super quiet. It's really quick as well. There we go. Done. Perfect. So release the roller at the back. Make sure you hold your vinyl. And then we can pull it out. And I'm just going to cut this design out. So let's see if we can see where it's cut. Normally you would do this on a table. This is not recommended to do standing upright. We also have Ellen from GraphTech is uh, in the Instagram chat as well. And hi, Ellen. So hi to Ellen. Um, she will also be at Sign and Digital, which is co-located with Printman Promotion as well this year. So do make sure you go and speak to Ellen and the team at GraphTech. And we're also looking forward to hosting a panel session with them in the Explain Lounge on the Monday. We are. So make sure you join us for that. All the schedules for um, events and talks are now out on the different websites. So the other thing, I'm just going to move this camera back, actually, because now that we're kind of done with the cutter, hold on. There we go. Right, so I've just taken my LED weeder and I've started to weed the vinyl. So as you can see, it just makes it really easy to sort of pick the corners. So this isn't ideal, not doing this on a surface. But as you can see, this vinyl is super easy to weed. It's coming away really nicely and it does have a tacky carrier as well so not only is this great for collecting little bits of vinyl when you're weeding if you have a spare piece to the side but it's also really handy for when you place it on your garment that it sort of almost grips it and it doesn't move so rather than having you know the design end up somewhere you don't want it to it's just super easy so there we go pull all of that away super super easy to weed seeing as we have already got one cut i'm not going to stand here and finish this because it's a bit of a waste of time for this live but you get the gist that's exactly what i did before this live when i created this design so first up any questions on the graphite cutter and everything that we've just done before i move on to fusing this no but i think you can keep going for now cool so once you have cut your design the next thing we're going to do is apply it with a heat press. So we're going to move this out of the way and take a plain black t-shirt and load it onto the auto open. Is the heat press in shot? Probably not. There we go. So we are using the good old trusty auto open heat press today, one of my favorites. Probably should have turned this on its side a bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Threading the t-shirt on, one of my favorite features about this heat press is that when you do lock it down for its pre-press, or any press for that matter, it pops back open again. And I can see from the pressure readout on here 
that my pressure was a little bit high, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got that spot on. Perfect. Okay, pre-press garment, step number one. Now, step number two is the actual application. And like I said before about sports film, this is such a quick one to apply. It only takes five seconds. So my heat press is, whoopsies, my heat press is set for 160 degrees. I had a pre-press timer of just three seconds and then my main press is only five. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this is probably the quickest fusing heat transfer anything that we have in the building. Mm -hmm. So apply it here. Like I said, it's got that tacky back, so it kind of holds itself in place, which is really helpful. And you don't technically need release paper for this application because it is hot peel. So we have pressure on a four, which is at the lighter end of medium, but it will work for this application. Then we just pull away our carrier, like so, completely clean. And there you have your first application. And as you can see from the detail on this cup as well, you can go quite fine with heat transfer vinyl, depending on which one you're using. Obviously, I wouldn't do this in 3D because it wouldn't really go very well. But for something like sports film, you can really get away with doing a nice finish like that. So super, super nice, soft, thin feel on that one. Okay, so we have a question from Branding Heart, and they would like to know, do you have any information available if you're just starting out? in terms of heat, starting out with heat transfer vinyl, I would yeah. recommend picking a few basic colors of what you think you want to do. So first step is get your color card, obviously, so that you can pick which heat transfer vinyls you want to use and which colors you want to get. If you are starting out, I'd always recommend going with black and white sports film extra because they're just ones you're gonna use all the time regardless of who you're printing for. Everyone always wants black on white and white on black. Once you've got your colour card and you know roughly which vinyls you want to work with, I'd recommend just ordering a metre or two of each one so that you can get them home, you can test them out. So just get a metre of sports film if you want to use, for example, say you're doing dance schools like our friend over at Nick at MPW who we had on the podcast last week. If you're doing a business like his, I'd get a sports film metre and a glitter metre. Test both of those out, do some fusing, try and break them, have a bit of a play around. And then once you've figured out which vinyls you want to work with, then you can start getting in those orders, creating some test products, ordering some more vinyl. If you are completely starting from scratch and you don't even have a cutter or a heat press, we do have some great bundles on the website to get you started. So not necessarily, if you don't want to start out with something like the Graphitech, you can start with like a silhouette cutter um, and an auto open or like a max heat press maybe. Um, and you can get those at a slight discount on the website in bundle form. And you also get some vinyl with that as well. So you can get everything you need, a business in a box essentially, to start out with. Do some test cuts, do some test fuses. You only need a couple of t-shirts to test with and then you're pretty much good to go. I would also say if you, if you want to go back to our podcast the last December as well, we did do an episode with um, Ellen from Graph Tech where we kind of went into quite a lot of, of detail about how would we would start out if we were f first doing it, some first steps to make, mistakes to avoid. Yeah. Um, so it's about 45, 50 minutes, but it's a really good listen if you're thinking about getting into vinyl. It's a good, good place to start. Definitely. So I'm just going to change my settings so that we can do the glitter layer of this application. Now, can we quickly jump back to screen share, Andy? Is that okay? Yep, all set. Perfect. So I'm just going to come out of this setting for a minute, out of Studio 2. I'm going to delete this because we're going to do something else in a minute. But let's come to the website. So this is styles.co.uk. And if you head over to the heat transfer vinyl section, you'll come to this page, which is just generic information about all of the vinyl that we've got. We've got a customer review in here and we've got all of this different information to help you. And then all of the vinyls that we have available. So sports film, for example, the one that we've just fused is this one here. So you can see all of the different colors that we've got. This is the beige one that we've just been using. But like I say, black and white are 100% the go-tos. So on here, you've got not only have you got details about all of the different vinyl, but you've also got the instructions tab. So on here, you can see the cutting instructions for the graph tech that I've got on here. And you've also got the application instructions. One thing I will say when you're cutting heat transfer vinyl is always make sure to do that test cut because I always play around with the force and the speed a little bit 
even when you are using our recommended settings, you know, sometimes how much of the blade you've got twisted out makes a difference, um, and a few things like that, the different thicknesses of vinyls. So always make sure to do, out, do a test cut first and make sure you've got everything set before you cut your whole design out. But we always give you these instructions as a starting point. So we're just going to change over to glitter for our layered application. So if I come down to instructions, I can see that we need the press on 150 degrees and this is a hot peel and it takes 10 seconds. So if we can jump back to camera, Randy, sorry, I'm making you it's okay. jump around a lot. So. Yep, you're on. Cool. So on the digital readout on the auto open heat press, you can change the time and the temperature really, really easily. So you just hit the mode button in the middle and you can adjust the temperature. So I'm going to it down from 160, which was sports film, to 150, which is our glitter application. Leave the pre-press as three seconds because we're not going to use it again for this because we've already pressed the t-shirt. And then up the temperature to 10 and then make sure we come out of mode so that it can cool down or heat up if you're just turning it on. So step number two, I have actually done, for those of you that want a bit more of a concise summary of how to do this, there is a more updated version on our website of how to layer heat transfer vinyl. Um, and I did actually use the exact same two. I used sports film extra in this color and glitter in the same color as well. But in that video, I explained that when you're using sports film, you don't have to fully apply it in order to layer it. So with this, obviously we've fully applied this for the five seconds because we were just applying it as you would if you were doing 10, 20, 30 of them but if you are layering because sports film is such a, a short dwell time and it's a hot peel you kind of only need to fuse it for two to three seconds peel the carrier off just to tack it to the garment and then you can put the glitter over the top and because the glitter fuses for 10 seconds sports film gets the time that it needs under the press to adhere properly anyway so just a tip if you are sort of layering applications you can knock a couple of seconds off the dwell time for the first layer which is sports film so, threading this back onto the heat press. Okay, so we've done our first layer application, which is the sports film. Now we're going to take our glitter. So this is one that I've cut and weeded earlier. This just has the Styles logo. And we're going to put this slightly over the Friday Vibes lettering of the sports film. And I am going to use release paper for this application because the sports film part of the design no longer has a carrier over it and I don't really want that touching the heat. So layer over with release paper and I'm going to fuse this for 10 seconds. Pressure's on a four, which is perfect. It's counting down for me. The transparency of this heat press is fantastic. It tells you everything you need to know about your application. Okay, so then we can just peel away that carrier for the glitter, like so. Nothing on there, as you can see. So when we take this off of the press, you can see there that we have layered the two vinyls. There you go. So there's only a slight overlap. So obviously you could do this more. I only wanted to do a bit of a subtle one today, but you could put a bit more of that over there. But there we go. I love that colour combination as well. I think it looks really cool. So there we go. That's how you do sports film heat transfer vinyl from a cutting, weeding and applying point of view. And then just a little extra tip of how to layer different effects as well. So that's, I think this is something that everyone can take away from this live. Even if you are just using heat transfer vinyl for customers that want majority plain designs and they're not really sort of into having full blown glitter or flock or 3D, which even though I think everyone should, this is a really nice way of just adding a bit of extra value to your products without having to do, you know, entire glitter designs and things like that. So something that you can offer that your competitors might not. I think that's a really cool way of doing it. So yeah, that's application number one. Next up, do we have any questions, sorry, before I move on to the high build? No, you can move on to high build. I know that everyone's been asking us for a long time. I know. Of to do a bit more of a demo on high build, so I think we go straight for it. Cool, okay, so here it is, the high build demo you've all been asking for. So, step number one, we're going to show you how you can create this, and obviously we will apply it to a t-shirt. So, 
What we're going to do first and foremost is change out the blade. So to cut high build, you do need a slightly different blade for the Graphitec machine from the standard blade through to the actual high build blade. I think it's actually called that on our website as well. So in order to do that, you just untwist the front section here. You can pull the blade out like so, and then you can just swap it for the next one. Okay, so this is the high build blade. Now, in order to get the right thickness for your material, so this is the high build we're going to use today. We're going to use black. Now, number one tip I always give people is when you're cutting the high build, it's the thickest vinyl on the market. It's a millimeter thick. So you want to make sure that your blade is the same thickness as the material. Is that focusing? There we go. So you want to make sure that it's the same thickness because obviously if there's not enough blade, it won't be able to actually cut through to where we want it to go. So you want to make sure when you pierce the material, it makes the indent that you want it to. So that's tip number one. And in order to do that, you just twist this black part at the end of the blade. Oh, where are we? Focus, there we go. So yeah, this blade will come out by twisting this bit at the back. I'm not going to twist it because I've already got it set to perfectly work for the material we've got. So I am gonna leave it where it is, but we do have, again, videos of us doing that if you want to see how we do it. So then we just pop it back in. So pull a little bit out of the front, slot it in, and then just tighten it back up again. Super easy to do. And there is actually a little bit of a storage section up here so you could keep all of your different blades in the cutter, which I really like, it's very handy. So, step two, we're going to change the conditions. So, if we come back to, we hold enter and select number one, and that will bring up our high build settings. So, if I go into conditions, we have got this on a force of 20, a speed of seven, um, yeah, and the high build smart blade. So, that's perfect. We are going to carry out a test cut, so I can show you exactly how this works. So, same process as before, loading in the vinyl like so, making sure it's straight. I haven't moved the pinch rollers because they're in the perfect position for the width of our vinyl, which is all the same. I'm gonna select one again to roll, measure the front edge. Perfect, it's happy, lovely. So I'm going to go into condition. So this is set on condition number one. If I go into the condition settings, this is where I carry out my test cut. So you can see at the bottom, it says cut test. And if you select the left arrow and then enter, it will carry out a test cut for us. And then you can use your weeder to just pull away the excess vinyl. And I have actually got, where's my test cut piece gone? Oh, it's here. It's right in front of my eyes. So this is just to show you what the test cuts look like, because I'm very aware that camera's not perfectly clear on the cutter. Why is it not focusing? There we go. So this is what it looks like when you carry out test cuts. So it does a little triangle in a box and you can just pull away the middle so you can see exactly how it's doing it. So as you can see here, this one was a little bit of a jagged edge and then we got to the sharper option by just increasing the force a little bit there. So really easy way to just make sure that your cutter is set perfectly before you carry out your actual design. So once we have got that set, we press enter again to bring it out of the test cut mode. And then we press the condition to bring it out and get it ready to cut. I'm just gonna, whoopsies, move it back, but I moved it the wrong way. Insert that back in. Okay. Okay, so what I was going to show you before I dropped the vinyl is if you use, I'll just let it measure again, bear with. Cool, now I'm gonna get this the right way this time. Right, that's the wrong way. If you press the down arrow, you can move the heat transfer vinyls to where you want it to cut. So where I've just done that test cut, I want to make sure that we're starting just ever so slightly above it so that we don't get the test cut in the actual design because I've also made that mistake before. So that's all ready to go. So we're gonna jump back onto the screen share, please. Yep, you're all there. Cool. So this one, I'm going to show you how you can use the tools in Studio 2 to build out a design. So I'm just going to do a really simple 3D for high build 3D. So just type it out using the text tool 
and then we'll change the font to be something a little bit bolder. That'll do. Cool, and then we'll make it bigger. And important step, don't forget to mirror. So object, mirror, flip horizontally. And now you are all ready to go. Just gonna make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, and then to bring it to the cut settings, we go to, uh, to cutting view, sorry, we go to file, cutting view, and then it will bring up the export section. Let's change it to lower right. So you can move it around wherever you want on your vinyl. And then we're going to hit output. So we'll go back to the cutter. So you can see even with the thicker vinyl, it's still a super, super, super smooth finish. And that's cut straight over the cut settings, which I was deliberately trying not to do. So we're going to do that again, but we're going to do it on the other side. So I'm just going to flick it to lower left. Clearly didn't move that up enough. And we're just going to go again. Now for high build 3D, you'll notice the cutter is moving a lot slower. And because of the thickness of the vinyl, it not only requires a higher force, but also a slower speed to ensure you get those really nice clean cut lines. If it was to move too quickly, you'd get jagged edges and it just wouldn't be as good of a quality of a cut, if that's the right way of saying it. Perfect. So that one's worked really well. So release the pinch roller at the back and we can release this. So you can see here, this was the first, black's actually quite a good color to do this on because you can see it. So this was the first one. And as you can see, it went straight over my test cut there. So we've done another one down here. So we're gonna cut this out and fuse it. This is not the most efficient way to make the most of a beta of vinyl. So I do not recommend that you just do this in the middle of the roll, but for the sake of the live, we're gonna sacrifice the piece of vinyl. So cut right around the design. Okay. Now you can use a weeder, but for the sake of this design, because A, it's so thick and chunky, and B, it's so small, I'm just gonna use my hands. So pull that away. And now you can see really, really nice clean cut lines on the 3D vinyl there. See, really simple to do. And then we're just gonna pull the middle out. There we go. So you can see that has cut super, super nicely. There's no jagged edges on there. And that's because we had it on the slow speed. We had the force at the correct amount. And now we are ready to apply this. So just going to double check my settings on the website. This is something I always, always do whenever I'm using vinyl. So high build applies at we have also got all of the cutter settings on here as well so when you're going through uh, 155 degrees for 20 seconds so probably should have upped this before we started cutting but hey ho this won't take a minute increasing to 20 seconds so this one does have a slightly longer dwell time but it is a much thicker material so obviously it does take that a little bit longer but it's a hundred percent worth it when you see the finished results so i'm going to do two today i'm going to do this big chunky one that we've done and then I'm also going to apply this one which is still a chunky design but st it's a little bit thinner for high build it's got a bit more detail in there now when it comes to 3d vinyl we tend to recommend from a wear point of view that it's better for um, like sweatshirts and hoodies and jackets or caps and things like that because obviously you, this is a thin t-shirt and if we were to put this chunky vinyl straight here i mean to be fair this design is probably small enough that it would be fine but if you were to put you know a massive chunky design on a t-shirt it wouldn't be very comfortable to wear so for things like um hoodies and sweatshirts jackets etc it's perfect for that we've seen some really great designs from some of our customers on like the backs of hoodies and the little tiny details on the sleeve and things like that but for the sake of application today, we're just gonna show you how to do it on a t-shirt. So same process as before, we're just going to load our garment, so splitting it, so we're isolating the layer we want to print onto, threading it onto our press, and we're going to pre-press for three seconds. Okay, taking our very, very chunky vinyl, now this is a cold peel, so I'm 100% going to be using release paper for this. Now I'm going to do this on the edge of the press 
just to show you how good the pressure and the temperature is all over the platen and all over the surface area. So it doesn't matter whether you're applying something, a big print in the middle or a teeny tiny print in the top left corner or top right, wherever you are, it's always going to be the consistent pressure, the consistent heat and the perfect application no matter where you are on the heat press platen. Do we have any other questions while we're here? Yeah, <clears throat> someone asking if you could um, repeat the cut settings you have at the GraphTech set for again. Yes. We will do that. This is going to take a minute to cool down anyway, so. Okay, so pulling my t-shirt off, as you can see there, it's on there, it's applied, but we're just going to give it a second to cool down. Okay, so cut settings for Graphitec. Can we flick back to the screen for a second, Andy? Sorry. No problem. So. We good? Yep. Cool, so this is the high build page on our website. And as you can see, you can see the different colors that we've got here as well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. Um, and there's a video here of how to use it as well, which is super helpful. But if you scroll down and come to the instructions tab, you can see the heat press application instructions here. And then you've got all the cut settings here as well. So we're going with GraphTech. So you've got the obviously the high build blade, the force, which is 20 and a slow speed. So if we come back, sorry, we can come back to the cutter now. I just wanted to run everyone through that. So if I go into my conditions, I'm actually going to try and zoom this in so that people can see what we're doing. Hmm, I don't know if that's going to work. We'll go with it. So within the screen setting here, this is the condition number one that we're in. So if we go press this button here, which is the conditions button, you can see one is condition, two is the tool, three is the speed, which we've got set to seven, and four is the force, which we've got set to 20, which is what the website says. Like I said, however, I would always recommend doing a test cut because I've changed the force and the speed on high build multiple times when I've been cutting it. So always make sure to adjust um, your speed and your force according to the test cuts that you carry out because you know it can change depending on sort of the cut of the blade your particular settings um, yeah so just always make sure that it's right for you and like I said always carry out that test cut so that you know that your actual design is going to be great and you're not wasting your vinyl I think that answers that question right let's see how cold our t-shirt is it's still quite warm because this vinyl is a lot thicker it does hold heat a lot um, more than like our thinner vinyls like sports film would for example just give it a minute to cool off I had someone asking if you had any recommendations about um, how fine a detail you can go with high build because it's a thicker vinyl again it's a bit of a there's not really an answer for this so in terms of how thin you can go we we do have a recommendation but my recommendation is always to test it because we have had people that have done quite fine detail with high build but they've spent the time carrying out the test cuts cutting multiple designs testing out how well it weeds that kind of thing so if you have a look on our website there are quite a lot of pictures of examples of what people have done um, but i mean i would always recommend go for something that's a bit chunkier especially if you're doing multiple of the same thing but you can do slightly thinner designs with vinyl. It is just a bit more fiddly. So I suppose it depends on sort of what you're doing it for, how much profit you're making from it in a way, um, how much time you want to spend doing it. But again, trial and error, carry out that test card, see how well it works and go from there. I'm just going to see if this is ready to lift. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do this in front of the camera. So, again, would recommend doing this on a flat surface, but for the sake of the live, we'll try and peel. So there we go. You can see, pull the carrier off there, and you've got a nice chunky, you see the 3D finish on that. Yeah, so that's our high build 3D. One of my personal favorite vinyls to use and this does look absolutely fantastic on caps as well we've used it multiple times with the 360 and the beachfield hats and they look brilliant every single time so if you are producing hats and you do have a 360 100 percent recommend high build you can do um, smaller designs as well so you can make a lot more profit from a single meter because the designs are 
you know, probably not even the size of half of this one versus, you know, what you'd put on the back of a hoodie, for example. So yeah, that's high build 3D. Do we have any more questions on high build? I know this is one of our most popular products for questions on Instagram, so. <laughs> cool, okay. To be honest with you, that's kind of everything I wanted to cover today in the vinyl. So I'm just gonna recap everything. So if you want to get started with heat transfer vinyl for your business, you're going to need some vinyl, obviously, and they do come in either meter um, size lengths, or you can get five meters, 10 meters, 25 meters for discounts, um, or you can buy sort of the whole 25 meter roll, which is the best way to do it when you're in profitable business. You will also need a cutter. So like I mentioned before, today we've been using the Graphtec C7000, but there are also other options available if you are a beginner and you want something more like a silhouette, etc. that's a bit smaller and a bit more budget friendly. Um, you will need a heat press, like the one I have here. This is the Auto Open, the Hotronics Auto Open. And you'll need something to weed with as well. And I highly, highly recommend these are our weeding tools. So... There we go. So you've got the LED weeder here, which has the hook edge, and then you've got the LED pin. Just turn that on, so you just twist. Oh, this one doesn't have a battery in it. Oh, there we go. So they have the little LED lights on the end so that you can see your cut lines really well. I tend to flick between these when I'm using them. I don't tend to, a lot of people have favorites. They either prefer the pin or they prefer the weeder. I think it depends what I'm weeding and what mood I'm in, but I tend to flick between both. So I'm glad that we have both of them here in the showroom. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of weeding as well, a tip that um, I always give people is that heat does help with the weeding process. So one of the things that I think turns people off vinyl sometimes is the fact that they do have to physically cut and weed their designs out. Now, that obviously is a longer process than custom heat transfers, like we said at the beginning. But the actual vinyl is attached to the carrier. And if you heat it ever so slightly, it does release the bonds a little bit and it does come away that bit easier. So we have what we call the weeding table, which is this thing behind me. And you can turn it on, it heats a little bit, and then you can pull away your heat transfer vinyl much easier. So that's definitely recommended if you are cutting like a meter or you know 25 meters, you can fit pretty much a meter on that cutting, uh, on that heating plate, and then you can just pull away all of the vinyl in one go. So it's a much quicker way of doing it. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of using heat transfer vinyl, to be honest with you. Like I said in the beginning, we have so many top, um, options available, so many types, so many colors, so many finishes. So if you are interested, do leave a comment on this video with any further questions. I'll make sure to check back in later on today and into next week on this video. So if you have got to this point and you didn't catch us live, still leave your comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you next week. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, next week's Friday Live is going to be at the slightly later time of 3 p.m. UK time because we are going live with Styles in the US. I'm joined by Kelly Walters and we're going to be talking about heat presses. So everything you need to know before buying your first heat press, if you want to level up to a more efficient heat press, anything like that, come armed with all of your heat press questions and we'll be covering that. So 3 p.m. on all of the usual channels and don't forget to like and subscribe in the meantime.